something that we all can relate to, man, like as far as trauma. You know, it's like most guys, to be honest, bro, you don't, don't have the father figure, bro. You know, like you're fortunate. If you're a guy that, that grew up in a, a healthy household, you're very, very fortunate, right? That's just not the case for most, most, most guys. So we grow up not even knowing the proper way to be a man, right? And, and, and if, you, if you're lucky, you're, you know, you might have a mentor or you might, if you play sports, you got to look up to your coaches and father figures. And most of these men that we look, look up to the father figures, a lot of times they're not great examples. We understand? So we're not even being, you know, I'd say mentored in the right way, you know, and you just grow up with all these insecurities, man, and, and, and never really understand, like, what it is to be a man. Like, this is how you change the tire. This is how you... You know, you lose a hammer. This is how you do certain things, you know. Um, this is how you treat women. But we just, most guys, we don't have that, you know. And I just, for me personally, and like just the guys that I interact with, you know, for men, like when you get a certain age, bro, I feel like every guy can admit to this, yo, finances, you know. So not, not being a, a certain place financially too, you know, is something that I feel like a lot of guys deal with. Because we want to provide tech, you know, so a lot of times we won't, you know, we won't go in date or even like, you know, try to really pursue women because we feel like we're in a certain place financially. And that, it affects our self-esteem to be, if we want to be real, um, our approach to every single thing because we, we tie our worth to finances, being able to provide tech, you know, when we're not able to do that on a great level, yeah. it affects every single area yeah, of our lives. You, you know? don't want to hit a girl love, but it's, you can't. Say, so you reach out to a girl, like, damn, conversation goes, you know, like, let me take you out to eat. I'm like, hold up, wait, like, exactly. I ain't the funds for this shit. Exactly. So I swear I've been through that shit before. You really won't, dog. And I, I missed out probably on some good women like that. Like, fuck, I can't even yeah. continue the combo because, yeah. you know, where that shit's going to lead. I'm like, damn. But I don't even say it's leading with money, bro. It's just us a man, bro. I just feel like it's our nature. You know, when we feel that like we're not a certain place, man, it's just, mm-hmm. you know, you don't feel as good about yourself, you know? And it does affect, it trickles down to other areas of life. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's it's a different pressure, especially as we get older. Like, I noticed for me, like, getting closer to 30, in my head, I'm like, okay, like, really getting it together, like, really, like, honing who I'm going to be, you know, like, in your early 20s, you can kind of, like, I, like, play around, try and discover yourself. But I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, it's a pressure for a man as you get in closer to your 30s, because you know, like, these are your prime years you're about to get into, so what am I going to do with this time? What am I going to do with these years? So I'm actually grateful now, like, that I'm single, you know? I used to be pressed, like, man, like, you know, I want to settle down, I need to find a girl, but I talked to some married men, and one thing that they were like, you know, like, some, not all, but some men, you know, that I talked to that got married young, they're like, man, I didn't understand myself as a man or my purpose, and, you know, it's like, you know, if you can focus on that and get that by 30, you know, like that just really sets you up, you know, because like the a man's mind isn't really mature until 30, you know, and most men make the, the bulk of their money after their 40s and 50s. Like Warren Buffett didn't make most of the bulk of his wealth until after his 50th birthday, you know. So I, I'm comfortable with that now. The best, like, it's like it's the best years of a uh, male's life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but, but. You know, but most times, man, if, if you're not mature enough, you don't understand that. You're like, bro, I'm about to be 30. I'm not where I need to be. Right. You know, the pressure just really add up. And that's why a lot of guys are going to depression. Yeah. Um, you know, some guys even commit suicide. Yeah. You know, like, pressure's a life, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it definitely, that's wealth, bro. That's a wealth, man. Like, to be able to have a father, like, I, I am grateful, you know? Like, so my dad, for example, his dad died when he was, like, 22. My dad's dad was very unhealthy, you know, was was a rolling stone, was abusive to his mother. So he saw a very unhealthy man. But my dad made the choice and decision that he wanted to be a father and wanted to be a better man. Um, And so, like, I see that sacrifice. Now, I see some of the things that my dad got onto me about that, like, we put a heads on. Like, and me stepping into that phase of, of, like, becoming a young man and, like, testing my father um, like I'm so grateful for like that masculine energy for him challenging me, pushing me, and like roughing me up at times whenever I, I I wanted to buck, you know. So I was I'm super grateful, you know, to to I understand the privilege that I have having had a father in my household, and I won't I won't deny that, you know. Like I it it it, it is a beautiful thing, and it's something that like 
I try and share with other brothers who, who haven't had that. You know, I try and share like that love that I was given, that I was fortunate enough to have, and my experiences to those that that are are willing and, and able to receive it. You know, um, bless you, thank you. Uh, because with the cycle that I do see, like growing up, you know, my dad was a pastor, so like growing up, I just saw like my family give so much, and I just grew up seeing a lot in church, and I saw a lot of like single single men repeat the same process that was done and them hurt people hurting people so becoming the same father that they hated so much growing up or wanted so much growing up they become that same absent father you know unless they you know it takes like a difference it takes a like a moral compass or code something bigger than you to make a shift to say you know what like i want to shift the generational curse with me, like, I want to be a father, you know, like, for me, it's easier because I had a father, just like somebody who, like, like I said earlier, who grew up with money, it's easier to understand finances and how to handle wealth when you grew up around it, you know, or you could just as easily squander it, and I think just, like, that's just the, the opportunity that we have as men, I read, I read this book, and it says, women um, are born, men are made, you know, we have, we, we we're, we're born male, but we have to choose to become yeah, a man. There's a lot of resources out there, you know, but you got to choose, like, to, you got to educate yourself mm -hmm. on manhood, you know, you got to choose to learn, like, you can't make the excuse of, like, man, I didn't have a father, like, all right, when you're younger, that's fine, when you step into adulthood, you are now responsible for your journey, you're now responsible for the kids that you bring in this world, you yeah. know, like, it is our duty, no matter what we had a father or not, society looks at men to be responsible you know and we got to understand that like like that's just a hard truth for us you know um so so for me like i i i have had to even though i had a father i've had to still find myself as a man you know i still had to find my way and i still bumped my head and made some mistakes um along my journey and it's also different for me like being in my late 20s not having a relationship with my father because he didn't have his father at this point in time in his life, you know? So it's still a learning process, but it's a beautiful thing. And I think just like father, no father, like we, we have to have to make that choice to be a man and to look and find better and to be better, even if we never saw it growing up, you know? I grew up with a you know, single mother, so I didn't have my dad in my life. I feel like it does, like it fucks with you in a way, you know? Obviously, like he was saying, it's like it's just you miss out on a lot of things, a lot of guidance that you need, you know, in a household. But then again, I agree with you. Like once you become a man, too, like it's up to you to go figure it out. I mean, you know, you can't make excuses yet. You gotta hold yourself accountable for shit. Like you can't point the finger. Like I'm not who I am. I don't blame it on my dad, but I do wish he was there. You know what I'm saying? Because he could have taught me shit that I had to learn. You know, by myself or in the street. You know, I made it might have not got the right, you know, guidance, but it's like, fuck, when you're you're a kid and you're young, you're gonna fucking you're gonna look for something to latch on to. And if it was the fucking older homies selling drugs on the block, like, you know, I didn't have that figure, so I'm like, Oh right. shit, I feel right. safe here. You know what I'm saying? And then that's why, you know, masculine energy. Yeah, bro. Because when you get that, because they, 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 the OGs yeah. will literally give you that. They'll literally be like, yo, here, you know, like, here's some bread, we'll get some chips, go do that. So then you're like, damn, bro, I ain't got a father. This dude here, if something happened, they're like, yo, what, what the fuck? Like, that's, hey, run home, I got you, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. a masculine energy, bro, like, that you, you can't, seek that shit. You'll you end up seeking it. You, you can't, can't really get from that. Like, a lot of times, women, that's what we don't understand. Like, you know, like, Women that try to keep their kids away from their their um, father, mm -hmm. they don't stand that yo. He needs you and the yeah. father. Yes. It's two different energies. As a as a woman, you can only do what a woman can do. You yes. cannot provide what a guy, what a man can provide. Mm -hmm. And there, there are a lot of young brothers that are messed up because of their mother's choice to exactly. to, to keep because of her hatred at to the father. Right. Keeping like you said, that's yeah. a good yeah. point, bro. Yeah, because it's a lot of fathers that want to be fathers, mother, right? But they won't let them. Yeah. And the way the system is set up against the them, it's so unfair. Like, automatically, like, yeah. it makes all But it all goes down to, like you say, we're like, as men, though, you know, we have to be responsible. No, I, I agree. You know, and, 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 and a great example, too, man, is like, you know, whether you believe in the Bible or not, is look at Adam and Eve, bro, right? Think about it. Um, nothing happened, bro, right? So Eve, is the, Eve picked the fruit, Eve ate the fruit. Nothing happened, bro, until Adam ate the fruit. You understand? So it, it all comes down to that man as a man. Like, we have to be responsible. Like, we're pretty here. You know, we we not 
we're not dictators, but we are the leaders. We are the head. Mm-hmm. You understand? We are the head. And women ain't our books to lay our back on. But, you know, as men, I feel like a lot of times we, we don't, you know, we don't, but we don't, we're just not willing to, 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 mm-hmm. to make those sacrifices um, to be responsible, you know, because it all comes down to men, to be honest, mm-hmm. man. Like this whole, everything, that, uh, our community, our culture, everything's happening, it, you, can, you can track it back down to men, our leadership. Yeah. We are leaders, you know, like if this shit goes how we, I feel like my, well, my definition of being a man, bro, is first, is um, understand who you are. Like, I, for, for me, it's different, bro. It's different because I use the Bible for, ref, for, a, lot, for a lot of references because mm-hmm. so, I don't really know it no other way. You know, being a man, like, just, just knowing who you really are, it, it, it goes to God first, bro. Understand who God is. That's the base foundation for me. Because uh, once I understand, you know, who's, who's my creator, and what I'm put here to do, you know, it kind of helped me to form my identity. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to being a man, I just feel like a man is, um, man, it's a God figure, bro. Like, uh, we're all made in the image of God. But like you say, like, the men were created first for a reason. Um, I feel like, you know, we're here to be res- uh, protectors, providers, um, priests, what's that, leaders. Um, yeah, that's this, 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 that's the gist of it. What definition of a man? Sheesh. I don't even know where to begin, though. <laughs> but it's so much. Yeah, it's so much, like. There's so much that comes from it. Can't articulate it. like. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin, honestly. <laughs> yeah, straight up. I feel like there's so much, so much things. I don't think money, you know makes you a man like I feel like there's I feel like part of things like a man can be identified like uh, like what you do you know what you do when nobody's watching I feel like that that plays a big part of who you are as a man because it's easy to like you know show people nice shit or do nice shit for people when people are watching I feel like you should be identified for what you do when nobody's fucking watching I think it comes with a lot of stuff that you gotta carry. You know, you gotta have like strength. Obviously, you gotta be strong. You gotta be, and that comes with everything else that we we're talking about. We gotta take a lot of shit. We can't be weak. Like, there's a lot of shit. You gotta be courageous. You know, you gotta be smart. You gotta be willing. Like, we're like, we're fucking punching bags, really. And then we can't even speak upon that. So being a man, I feel like it fucking be four Harry Potter books long of words though. Okay. I just feel like it's, it's, like, it's, it's just it's so hard much. To, it's hard to yeah. take that bro, but what I want to say is that, okay, it's the difference, you know, being a man and then being like a 20, let's say, grown boy. You understand? Because like, you could be a man, because being a man means that you're, you, 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 I feel like you're at a level of maturity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you've accepted a certain level of responsibility, you understand who you are. Because mm-hmm. also, like, being a real man, it, it, it's, it's attached, you know, on your purpose, bro. Yeah. You know, because if, if you don't know what you're here, you're put here to do, you don't really know who you are. Yeah. You know, so all of that ties into being a man. Because once you find out your purpose, and you know, you know what you're here for, now you're able to move different and lead different. The fairy tale vision of a man is where it's like, oh, a man is this, and he has this, you know, this fucking equal balance, and then it's, it's, it's bullshit. Like, I just feel like you just gotta be, like, the best way is like, you just hold the world. It's like the, the Hercules sculpture, bro. Right? You just, that's just, just being a man. You got the whole world on you, and you gotta hold that motherfucker up. That's, and I feel like that thing where it's like, okay, you, you can be vulnerable. It's like, it's literally that. It's like, it's fictional. It's a movie. It's like a fairy tale. That shit. I mean, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I think we're planters. We're farmers. There's a reason that we carry a seed, you know. Because we have to cultivate, we gotta we, we gotta work by the sweat of our brow. Whether it's mental anguish of like having to create and provide, or physical, you know, like that's on us. Like you said, like it's our duty to to be wise stewards over our time, over our talents, over our body, over everything around us. Like a household, t- keeping the household clean, keeping the yard maintaining. Like it is our duty. No matter what the the the, 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 the yeah yeah Yeah, like like we're we're that's what you know and again like MJ said you know like I think it's important for every man to have his own moral code you know and 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 for me it's it's the Bible as well that's my moral code and my compass 
And so, you know, I, based on that, I understand, like, that I'm called to be a king. I'm called to be a priest. I'm called to be a leader, you know, starting spiritually. And that bleeds into my mind. That bleeds into my body. It starts with stewardship, you know, and it starts with my spirit. It starts with submitting myself unto the creator, you know, and allowing him to pour into me, to give me wisdom, to give me insight and show me how to be a leader, you know, and be the, be the reflection of who he is, you know. He made us in his own image, so him being my leader, how do I lead in this space that this of, of, of time and life that you've carved out for me to live in? What is my duty here? How am I supposed to lead and leave a legacy of leadership? How, where am I supposed to plant seeds, you know? What am I, you know, supposed to be giving, you know? Like, it is sacrificial, you know? Like, I know that I'm going to die one day. You know, I know that my soul is going to leave this body, but what am I going to sow into the world before I go back and I see God again? You know, well, I, I think that's that's what it is for us as men is to leave a piece of ourselves here. You know, so and, and that hurts. It's painful. You know, that's our birth. You know, women give a physical birth, but man, the, the birth that men have to give is different. Man, it's our soul, our spirit, our blood, our sweat, our tears, and we never stop giving birth to the day we die. You know, like it's every day we gotta show up. We gotta be responsible. There's there's yeah, always there's, there's, a duty. You yeah. know, like we're always at risk of like, man, if I gotta give my life today for for my family, mm -hmm. for my what I believe in, my moral code. You know, like are you are you are you that sound as a man that you're ready to do that? Do you really? You know, it's a lot of people that profess like I believe this or that, but are you willing to sacrifice God. your life for that? You know, like that's that's the duty of a man. You know, for me and. and all facets and that's tough that's a hard pill to swallow you know yeah. but there's a reason that we're looked at as being expendable and you know that's why our legacy lives on as we were talking about after we died man like thinking specifically about dr miles monroe you know he passed away but the sacrifice that he made while he was here it still lives on today he was living this purpose right so it's almost like to be to me personally man like if you want to tap into to, to being a real man you know you have to tap into your purpose you understand? Like you have to have your purpose because you won't have the, the impact you're supposed to have unless you're actually walking with your purpose. Mm -hmm. Like we're all put here to do a specific thing, yeah. right? So it's almost like this: like if you if you bought a certain product from the store and it didn't do what it's supposed to do, it, it was pointless. You understand? Like it didn't it didn't serve its purpose. So us being here, man, if we don't come to earth and do and become and manifest and be what we're supposed to be. And our, our, our existence was wasted. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't do what we were purposed to be. Yeah. You know, so that's something that, you know, I feel like to tap, you know, if we, if we don't tap into our purpose, and to tap into your purpose, you have to have a relationship with God. That's why I tie, like, you know, you being a real man to understanding God and having a relationship with God, because if you, unless you do that, you won't tap into your purpose, you know, and do what you're supposed to do. And, and I feel like a man, once, you, once you're walking in, because to walk in purpose, It'll, it'll, it'll demand that you're responsible. You have to be responsible. You can't walk in purpose if you're not responsible. You know, um, you can't walk in pur on purpose if you, like you say, if you're not protecting your time, your mind, your energy. You just can't. And that's why I say, man, you know, first is priest, protector, provider. All that, you know, first you do it for yourself, and then you decide to bring a woman on, and then you have to do it for your family. Be a priest, be a provider, be a protector. And, and if you look at Adam, you know, before Adam ever had a relationship with Eve, he had a relationship with God and a relationship with his exactly. purpose. And he's working. And he's working. He, he's working. he was right. focused working. and he's working. And there's a quote that says, a man um, a man that does not know his purpose distracts himself with pleasure, you know? Well, and there's a lot of guys out there that think they're on purpose because they have a transactional value of, like, money, but they're constantly distracting themselves with women, the strip clubs, drugs, partying, drinking. And I know I've been there. I've been guilty yeah, of that, yeah, you know. Yeah, but like yeah, finding absolutely. my purpose and finding myself in God and having a personal relationship with God, not not some religious rhetoric and just yeah, doing yeah. what religion has taught, but doing what I know from my relationship, my my one on one time with meditating and being by myself and reading the Word and studying and seeking God for myself. That has led me to my purpose. That has led me to being in a place spiritually to where I'm attracting the right people into my life, you know, and, and being guided. And I think that's important for every, even if you do, if, even if, for all the men out there that don't have a father, understand that the creator is your father and he will guide you and put mentors Absolutely. and people into your life 
that 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 will, will blow your mind and, and pour and instill in you greater than our, our biological bodies ever could. You know, that's how powerful yeah. that yeah. the, the creator is, man. And it's it's different. And that I think that's the the you know to finish up from my statement. I think that's our biggest attack is like men are there's so much distraction that's thrown at us of like pleasure and money and things outside of ourselves so we never focus on who we are you know because that's when we really become powerful when we realize that we're spiritual beings having a physical experience and we tap into that spiritual power that's when we really step out of that that phone booth and we're superman you know, Discipline yeah. man is a dangerous motherfucker, man. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and I see a quote too. I see a quote that says, "You know, how could you be a king if you were a slave to your pleasures?" And yeah. you can't really get, yeah, can't be a true king, man, being slave to your pleasures. But to be down. honest, man, like you know, to 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 kind of summarize this all, man, it's like, bro, it all stops with men. Like we if we actually, you know, make conversation like this cool, bro. And, and and really decide to be responsible, we could we could create a shift, yeah. you know, and be a spark in the culture, bro. It's yeah. like, you know, when it comes to men, like we don't make it like, you know, being celibate. It's not cool in manhood, but the guy code is not cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? But right. whereas being celibate, bro, a man who's celibate is a powerful man. Yeah. But we don't we don't make that a cool thing. We don't talk about it. You yeah. know? It's yeah. a reason I'm, why I'm literally I'm literally on like a sober yeah, trip. Sober from Fucking, you know, alcohol and fucking women, bro. Yeah, big, yeah, bro, what I'm bro. saying, but but that's the stuff you have to make cool, bro. What, what did you say? Ain't, ain't nobody gonna rap about that. Uh, you know, it's about popping bottles, getting girls. Say, you know, uh, that's that's what society and culture you can't be king is always pushing at us, man. And that's where we have to the importance of knowing yourself so that way you can yeah, detach yeah. from what society is pushing out and be able to think for yourself, create you know, your own boundaries for yourself. We all have our own struggles and we go through different things, different experiences, different walks of life. So what what my struggles might be may not be your struggles, you know? It could be something totally different. You may not have a problem with women or drinking or whatever the case may be, but we all know ourselves or we need to know ourselves so we do know what our boundaries are, what we need to work on, man. But you know, you're right, man. I think understanding that we're all kings and we don't have to fight against one another. Kings right. can rule together, you know? Bro, I'm making it design. cool, though. I'm saying, like, how do you make it cool, bro? Like, mm -hmm. what I'm saying, e even when we, we, we look at, you know, our culture, bro, like, um, it'll, culture, it'll never be cool. culture. You know I'm saying, but we have to, we have to have this conversation. It has to be a balance. And the reason why, bro, like, you know, drugs, hella women, all that stuff is super popular, right? You know, the rappers, the rappers talk about it all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's on TV and stuff. Yeah. But, even like us, bro, you know, we why, why aren't we having more of these conversations? And why, why aren't we honoring that, yo, yo, I'm a guy, I'm 28, I'm celibate, I don't, I'm not having sex. Why don't we make that a cool thing? You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Where, where a guy who's 28 who's a virgin, and he's ashamed, he don't want no one to know that. Yeah, you yeah, know? Right. Whereas mm -hmm. the lady who's 28, she's a virgin that's cherished, like, yo, yeah. she's precious. Right. You're precious too, right. man, you're a king. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, some of my boys, he's like 25 and you're a virgin. And we working out, I'm like, bro, I'm so jealous of you, bro. Like, bro, please, bro, don't lose that. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And, and, and you know, pure right, pure, bro. Yeah. And, and for him, he's like, it's kind of like, he's kind of ashamed of it. And I'm like, right. bro, that's a superpower. Right. You understand? That's a right. superpower, bro. Right. You know? So I just feel I like that we need to have more of these conversations. Yeah. We do. That this is this is the start right here. Like just having having these talks, and then like. Are the life that we live like be the example, be the byproduct, like the life that we live be the product of our habits, of our discipline, of our structure, of our order, of us being um, and living what we talk about, you know, yeah. like that's how we make it cool whenever, you know, like, granted, again, we're visual creatures, that's why it's easy, like, to see the OGs on the block, because we're looking, we're always looking for success or, like, pieces around us, that's just our nature, you know, and we, we latch on to... Like once we we're like we're like a robot. Like we'll two latch on. Like okay, oh this is we're we're scanning the room. Like okay, this is life. Then it's like okay, we hone in on that thing. Like okay, I see him providing for himself and getting money, regardless of the what the repercussions are. You know, like that's that's something that we we latch onto as men. So having these conversations, being open, being public, 
um, about our views and like the, the choices and decisions that we're making. This is where it starts at. And again, it ain't it ain't gonna never be looked at as cool. But it ain't about it being cool. It's about it bringing some heat to the table and challenging people. You know, iron sharpens iron. It creates friction. It creates heat. Like man, I want to challenge you to to do something different. You know. Uh, so time to get uncomfortable, though. Right. <laughs> you all said very valid points, right? You know, there's there's no true definition of what it means to be a man. Being a man is being a provider. Being a man is, is someone that, that understands purpose, that walks in his purpose, finding God. And I think, you know, for me, if we if we tie it all back to one thing, you know, although it's so multifaceted, right? There's so many different components that come together to truly being a man. I think it can tie back to one main thing. And, and, and for me, being a man means accountability, right? You know, it's like no matter what the situation is, I don't care if I'm struggling, I don't care if I'm hurt, I don't care what it is. If my responsibility is to provide for my family to be a provider, it's, it's uh, holding myself accountable to making no excuse, right? Uh, you know, being a true man, we talk about, you know, does, does not having a father figure play a role for it? Well, being a true man comes back to that accountability again. Do I hold myself accountable where I'm going to use that excuse for the rest of my life and say, well, my father exactly. wasn't there? Right. Or am I going to hold myself accountable to, to figure out what it truly means to be a man, right? You know, finding God, you know, it's it's not cool or some people might not look at it to say, OK, it's not cool to find God or or to speak about things like like celibacy. Right. But am I going to, again, use it as an excuse or am I going to hold myself accountable? So I think oh, no matter no matter what it is that we talk about, like all of the different things that, that come together, being a man, it's holding yourself accountable to to you know make that right decision and, yeah. and do it on your own. Right. And it's, what that, it, not. it's that thing that we do by ourselves, you know, like like you said earlier, like. What we do when we're by ourselves, like being accountable to ourselves, it's that spirit that that yeah. judges us. It's that that inner thing that's like, man, this ain't right. Mm -hmm. Or man, man, you know what? Like I'm gonna do the right thing. I ain't gonna, you know. I see this money right here, and yeah, I know it ain't mine. I ain't gonna touch it, you know. Like it's it's that inner battle, you know, between what the flesh wants, which is lust, and love, which is perfection, you know. The lower self and the higher self. Right, yeah. right. So that's where it starts. Like I guess it's this understanding your spirit. Yeah. Understand that that you are a spirit and you're also a, a flesh. You're also a body, you know, but you got to choose. You can't, you got to be able to steward over those cravings, you know. And that. so just the whole accountability thing goes back to ourselves and just that inner compass, you know, that yeah. that that breath of life, that that peace of God that is in us, that that has us going day in and day out till we leave this earth, you know. Mm -hmm. So like being true to that, to the breath, you right. know, to the to the life force that's in us, being accountable to that, being better because we know we we know when we're doing wrong, you know. <laughs> like everybody know that feeling. Like man, I knew I was kind of crooked doing that, but mm -hmm. we'll choose to bypass it. We'll we we start distracting ourselves. You know, we 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 will distract our our moral code. You know, we'll do something enough to where we become immune to it. You know, and and and, and then we generally have a crash or a fall. But that's a whole another topic. But yeah, body finding their relationship with God, the Creator, in their own way, seeking that. Is that our responsibility as men to hold ourselves accountable to even educate ourselves on on why it's important? You know, you look at warriors right you look at fighters well before a boxer goes into uh, uh, into why. training right mm -hmm. before that boxer goes into training well, he's not allowed to have sex no you know the, but why all right yeah, you know, it's so it's do, it's do it's we hold it's the equivalent here fucking releasing it's like a male running 20 miles all right so like the power i mean so it's, it's, it's so not it's not even just a religion a religion standpoint nice. for people that don't believe in religion from a science standpoint that's what i'm saying and it goes like when they talk about um, how we, we look at we just look at sex as something you do casually. Yeah. When mating is a science, you're only supposed to, you know, what I'm saying release, bro. When you're, you're about to, you know, mate, you understand? That we're, just spreads. <laughs> we're right. the only, we're the only mammals that have sex out of lust for pleasure. Yeah. Without we, we we again we've got desensitized from our spirit. Nature Dolphins do it too. That. Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, all right, maybe so. There's some little freaky little creatures there. <laughs> 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 dolphins, dolphins, next time somebody asks you, dolphins do it too. All right, all right. Well, uh, I guess dolphins, you know, they struggling too out there. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, they struggle with that hot girl summer, man. They be seeing the bikinis in the water. Hey, next time you see them out there, hot girls, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 
girls at the beach, man. Hey, yeah, hot girls out just diving. You think the, the, the female dolphins out here just diving yeah, for no reason or they dolphins. diving for attention? No, no. So Caleb, I, I mean, I, I heard you say before. Uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, we had we had this conversation, and um, you know, you were talking about how there was some, a culture where they been, they believed where like when you um, how, I don't know how you worded it, but I know you had mentioned it before. And I wanted you to speak on it. Um, you know, why celibacy? Like what he said, the science behind it. You know, we're we're supposed to produce as men, right? And you right. said when when you give your last, right. You can't just be out here just busting nuts left and right. When you give your life, that that's like the, the end of your life. Is it, remember, I, do you remember when you when you when you made that yeah, statement? Yeah, it's like man. Again, like I said earlier, we're we're put here to be farmers, right? Like I'm not I'm not gonna just keep putting seed everywhere and not tend to it. You know, like that's that's my life force. That's that's how I, I'm, I'm gonna eat. How I'm gonna wanna provide and and, 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 and and create new crops, new legacy, new generations. But again, the our carnal nature has gotten addicted to the pleasure of it, you know, that, that now we'll wear condoms or, or women get IUDs, all these unnatural things, and because we have science, you know, but if we didn't have this technology and have this science, like, where would, where would we be, you know? And so, like, it's become just this pleasure culture because we have all these technology now, you know? Like, we created things to be able to indulge more into being able to just have sex, you know, for the pleasure of it, but not for the purpose of it. And that's why for, for men, like, we have such clarity, like, after, you know, we, we, we have our moment um, where it's just like, man, like, why am I doing this? Yeah, we want her to leave. We feel, like, disgusted, you know, because we literally, like, gave a piece of ourselves. That is our printed DNA of carbon copy of who I am at this moment is coming out right now to go and create a, another version of me. And if I'm not being responsible with that, I'm depleting my energy, my time, my nutrients in my body every time that, that like literally men um, get get weak and we become depressed after after um, just constantly masturbating in pornography. Like it's a reason why, you know. Um, that shit lowers your vibration for sure. Yeah. And it, it's a reason sure. why it's supposed to be done in marriage and like. That's a moment that you share with your wife. That's a vulnerable moment that she gets. She, she's literally getting my seed, and now she's getting me vulnerable and emotionally, like to lay in her bosom and to be to be weak, you know. Because now we've combined and like flesh to my flesh, bone to my bone, you know. Like you're legit that and producing that, you know. Um, and, and so just that whole process right there, like, just shows our role as men. Um, even penetrating things. Think about how we have to penetrate the ground, penetrate the earth to plant a seed. Like that right there explains our role and just our nature and how God created and designed our body. You know, we're here to penetrate the world and to leave something, but leave something that but we have to be responsible for and watch it grow. You know, we got to provide and we got to protect, you know, that thing. We got to protect that woman, you know, like while she's pregnant. You know, we got to be there. For her, you know, so it's I made the mistake. I lost my virginity at 15. I, I knew better than the decision that I made, but I didn't have the understanding. I had the knowledge, I didn't have the understanding. But bumping my head many a times and like thinking that like, okay, oh, this is cool, you know. But after a while, of like being depressed and like you know, like kind of questioning myself and why I'm doing these things, I realized like, okay, man, this is actually toxic, man. Sleeping around. And I honestly, I, I started my celibacy journey the first time just trying to, after reading a book, Think and Go Rich, you know, and like that was my first just like biological understanding of it and just like how that makes us more disciplined and focused. I just tried it out. But then I, as I begin to get closer to God, then that's when I, I tied the spiritual piece to it, you know, and I'm not going to sit here in front like it's hard, you know, it's something that's been imperfect for me. I ain't been perfect like on my, my celibacy journey or abstinence, whatever it is you want to call it, you know, um, but it's one of those things that like I, I understand like, man, I don't just want to give myself willy nilly no more like like just just common just. Sex for the sake of sex, man, is so disgusting to me. Now it's like junk food. I'm like, nah, man, I really want to save you, myself man. from my wife, you know? Like, I want her to have a whole me and not a, a piece of me, you know? So, like, that's what 
my relationship with God and like wanting to give myself fully to my future wife is what encourages me. And also just the clarity and the discipline that I now have tied through experience and trial and error of having having consistent sex and being celibate now. Like I see how much better my life is, you know, like being a more focused man, you know, focused on one crap at a time. How old were you when you lost your virginity? Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. How 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 old, how old were you? I was in eighth grade. I think that track. Oh, 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 thirteen. Fourteen. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's a young yeah, one. I fucking uh, was with an older lady. She was thirty six. I was. I, that was. That was my. Thirty six. That was my next question. Eighth grade. No way, bro. She was thirty six years old. So was yours an older older yeah, girl? Yeah, it was a uh, um, my my freshman year in college, bro. I literally felt I was going to. Bro, it's crazy, bro. I literally felt I was going to die afterwards. Cause I was like, cause like you know we had a real pure relationship with God, bro. Right. Came from the Bahamas. Um, I went to St. Thomas, bro. So from the island straight to college, bro, it was nothing like I've never seen. I'm in Miami, and it, it, was, it was an old lady who work at the school, bro. I was like, I was 19. She had to be like 45, okay. right? Yeah, man. And I, you know, I, and it's, what, I, what about yourself? Was 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 the girl older than you, or or was she? Uh, same nah, age, we, we were the same age, but she was a virgin and I was, okay. you know, and so she kind of prayed on that. Like, I didn't realize until later that that was her prerogative was to take my virginity, you know. So, yeah, but, she stole your soul. What? Yeah. yeah. But so, what, what I, let's, let's, speak on, let's speak on that, you know, kind of tying the topic into this. You know, we, we spoke about uh, celibacy, but, you know, a lot of us don't understand, as men, we don't understand the journey of celibacy because we're introduced to sex so early, right? And, and and in a sense, we we it sounds like a joke, right? Because it's not manly to talk about it. But a lot of men, their virginity is taken from a woman that's much older than. than I think we fall them. into the trap of seduction. Man. You fall into the trap of seduction, like, and know, then so and then you're expected to not to to not be sexualized like situations and not be attracted to women by this. But it's like you, you fall right. into it so early that you have no understanding of what it means. Like so, like, talk talk man, about losing it, but to an older. Look, talk about 45 and uh, Man, 36. she took away, bro. She took, I, I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I did not know what I was doing, bro. I just laid there, bro. I don't even know if I even... Uh, man, I, <laughs> I didn't even know what was yeah. not, bro. I don't even know what happened, bro. It was, it was crazy, bro. But I know afterwards, though, I went I went back to my room, my dorm room. Man, I called my, my, my mentor. And I'm like, yo, bro, I'm gonna die tonight. And for God, don't kill me. Because, like... Because I, I really wanted to keep my virginity until I was yes. married, bro. I really wanted yes. to. Okay. So, yeah, so I was like, bro, I was shaking that night, man. I remember, like, yesterday, bro, I was really, really nervous, man. But she, um, you know, she took it away, bro. She, like, she, also, I played a part, bro. I, you know, you know, you're young. Yeah. I see the cafeteria. She worked in the cafeteria. I'm like, I'm flirting with her. And she's like, okay, boy. She keep talking. She's like, oh, yeah. She's like, okay, bro. Bro, I was ready for it. She's like, okay. Okay, got my number. I'm gonna pick you up next weekend. Be ready. And me yeah. trying to act like I had sex before, but I never, I didn't have, I didn't yeah, know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I never used a condom before. I didn't know what to do, bro. Yeah. She came with a condom. She came with everything. She was like, "Yo, so she, she said, let me show you the ropes, yeah, young yeah, boy.'" Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh." oh but now, even even though the girl was was the same age as me, the same thing happened. Like it wasn't more me. more experience. Her, she got on top of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bro. know, and so I think it's for those type of women. I think some they they got touched or hurt or somewhere in their past, like early on. You know, like possibly. You know, I think for my case, that's that's what ended up happening to that girl. Like she ended up losing her virginity like early. She ended up being like raped or something. Raped, right. Yeah. And so she, she subconsciously she took that same energy, that same seducing spirit, and like used it on me. You know, like I wasn't even trying to go that far. I'm like, we gonna kiss and make out, do a little something. But I didn't like even want to go that far. She got on top of me. Oh. And as a man, like again being seduced, like I was trained in my head to be a gentleman, to be soft and docile with women. So like I don't want to be like nah, like I don't want to do that. You know, it's like how how do you handle like seduction and when and where do you say no to women? Women are, are, are taught to like say no, but when when are we, we taught to say no? Right, we hunters. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like we so it's like you know you a hunter, you go and hunt. If it's coming to you, bro, like like what do you do? What what about you, Alex? You know how do you, do you feel so, with the situation? Is this the the older the older shit, woman? Shit, that should happen to me. Like it was just. Sample like him, I was just talking like hot shit. Like I knew what I was doing. I used to go to my cousin's house like every weekend, bro. He was older. 
he was like, you know, he was in his 30s and shit. And I used to go over there because, you know, my mom, like, she was going through some shit when I was living with her. So, like, I was like, I'm out with my cousin. Like, he let me, like, drink beers and shit. So, I'll slide over there and shit. It was this chick. Her name was Jamaira. Shout out, Jamaira. <laughs> <laughs> no. <bro. laughs> I won't say her name. I won't say her name. So, this one chick. So, like, she would just come through with her homegirls and shit. Uh, my, my cousin had a little bit of money. He had, like, a big-ass projector. So I was, like, playing Halo and shit. And I'll be there just a the whole weekend. He'd just order me pizza. I'd be like, yo, there's beer. Or, like, whatever. Smearing off ice. You know, so, you know, I'll probably drink, like, one, maybe two. Just play video games all weekend. You know, we had these chicks over and shit. So it started like that. Right. And then my cousin was like, yo, what's up? Like, you, you ever got your windy wet? And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> You know, talking hot shit. Like, hell yeah, man, hell yeah. I'm like, he's like, nah, you ain't got your willy wet, whatever. Da, da, da. I'm like, nah, no, nah, I haven't. And he was just literally dead ass. It's like, nah, fuck that. Like, you about to lose that bitch today. And he told homegirl, and she's like, nah, I'm like, whatever. Da, 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 da. Man, it's kind of fucked up because my cousin's there, like, yo, if you fuck with me, like, you do it. And she literally was just like, all right, come on. Straight up, just walk me to the back. I was shit of rage, boy. <laughs> Like, it could, I couldn't even hold the control of the Xbox controller. <laughs> I was sweating. I had the mic on. I'm listening. I'm like, God, oh, you tell me. Man, I just got to say no. Oh, like, I'm just listening. I'm playing. I'm like, fuck. What I do? I'm like, oh, this hot shit. And so I literally went. Bro, and I was sweating, bro. I was so scared. I went to the back where and shit. And just like that. Like you said, she's just like, yo, like, are you okay? Whatever. Like, can I touch you? Have you ever did this? Whatever. And I'm like, like nah, I haven't. And like, she was like, do you want to do this? And at this point, I'm like, oh, there's no way out. I'm like, yeah, she's like, okay, like, do you know what you're doing now? So she's like, all right, lay down. She's like, is it okay if I touch you? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I just lay down. At least she was playing. Oh, too bad for oh, life, bro. Life. She walked my boy through the whole situation. I was, a, I was a baby. Why I had two belly buttons. She was just here to one of them things. <laughs> and then that was it, bro. She was like, yo, can I do this? She literally told me, like, yo, can I, like, do this? I'm like, yep. I was literally it, yeah, bro. She bro. put it on me, and I, I was in the shit and breaks, so I'm not gonna cap. I wasn't even yeah. in there, like, enjoying it. But then when I got to, you know, when my cousin was there, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, I didn't get buns all the way to my senior year, dog, after that. I didn't, like, I didn't want nothing to do with the shit. Right. Like, I, I wanted, I, I like, you know, women and shit, I, always, I was always flirting with them, but I was just like, bro. I ain't doing that shit. It's, it's it was really a, weird, it was a weird, dramatic experience. It really was. It really, yeah. 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 really was, dog. I, I swear, I didn't get all the way up to my, my senior year, dog. And I was, bro, I could have, like, you know, come back plenty of women, bro. You know, it was super popular in high school and shit like that. But I just, it just wasn't me, dog. So, like, that it was like a similar experience where a girl, same, not, not of my age, and she came and put that thing up on me. Like, it was, then it was that again. And then she started, like, teaching me shit and then yeah. from there then I started like you know started doing my own thing I started dabbling it I graduated then that was when I'm like I really started like getting it in I guess you could yeah. say but yeah one of all those years bro I did not touch not one fever I would, like I said I would flirt kiss you know whatever talk a lot of shit but I never did nothing dog and it was like it was periods of time that it would literally be like that and everybody would be like Man, you lying like you don't know, like bro, I swear to God, I'm not fucking like that. Like I think I am. Like so for me it was, you know, like I had the experience. I legit came home, I had the same experience, man. I sat in the shower and I just cried, man. I just got in the bed, man. It, it just some weird. I got out of the shower, didn't even dry off, I just laid in the bed. <laughs> so I, good. I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> I was that depressed, man. It was that mind-boggling, but it shook me so much after that that I'm like, well, dang, I done did it. Now, look, now I just want to try it again. You know, I done lost it. Once yeah, I, I yeah. like confronted it, like I done actually lost it. Like, we let's figure it out. So, and I got addicted to me. I went through a dog phase in high school. I went through a bad dog phase, man. It wasn't until I got to college that I was just like, man, I don't want to be like this no more, man, because I was depressed. I like... Legit, my senior year of high school, I wanted to commit suicide, and I didn't realize it at the because time. Because of the, the sex? Yeah, because I was depleting myself, man. I was giving myself all the time. I was legit, man, in high school, man, I was getting buns every day, like, just crazy, because I just got addicted and didn't realize, like, I, like, I le re legit remember losing my purity. Like, I felt that bro, purity that's, that's, leave me. That's how I felt, bro. You know? And, and for you, for me, too, it was the same thing, bro. Like, once I confronted it, bro... 
I just, I just start wilding out, bro. Do you two feel? I mean, from a, from a strong faith base, right? Because you know, you being being the a PC, you know, the, the preacher's kid, right? Do you feel like that played a part in it? Like it's like it's your your soul sheltered sometimes from like how the world is, right? Everything's from a religious standpoint, and you have to be this because of this. Do you feel like that played a role? And in, 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 but not only in you having that dog phase, but did it also play in a role with you feeling so guilty that it happened? Yeah, because it's like I knew better even though I didn't understand. It's just like somebody tell you, yo, that stove hot. <laughs> and you, you touch it one time and that's all it take, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like I went and touched the stove, but this stove actually kind of feel kind of good, you know? And so I got a di- It was like a oh, drug. Cookies. <laughs> 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 yeah. He said, I'm not touching this. I'm not touching the stove, but if you throw some bread in there real quick, I might pay attention to the loaf. It's like the bread. I was like, that's hot. And next time, I was like, okay. Hey. Hey. It's all like, hey. Hey. we over here cooking with grease now. <laughs> now. As an older man, if I could go back, I would I would not do it, bro. It's it's not worth it, man. I, Don't you wish you could go back and like see your you? I'll just walk up to me and go, and <laughs> walk right. away, you know? Right. <laughs> Man, I would drag myself by the way. Like, get out of here. Yeah. Walk away, dog. Man, wow. yeah. Nah, I, I definitely wouldn't have done it too, bro. Because it's like, if you try to be pure, bro, for so long, once you lose it, bro, it's like, you feel like you lose a part of you. You know, and that's, they just say, hey, man, I'm just not, I've already lost this. I'm going to stop wilding out. Yeah, you know, that's, 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 that's what happened to me too, bro. It's like, it's like you, you lost that self love. Like, like you, you said, you could feel that shit leaving your body. That's when I, like, you know, especially like this past year and shit, like, I literally really, like, took a step back. Like, I'm like, whoa, hold up. Like, that whole energy shit. Like I said, you could feel fucking depleted to the point, like, damn, I gotta charge up. Yeah. I say that jokingly to all my friends that laugh. I'm like, man, I'm about to hold up to a Tesla charger. But it's like, I really feel that way, like, I'm like, damn, dude, I feel like, like that, I feel like just depleted, or like, the other day, I felt for the first time that, like, like, you believe even, like, your third eye, and, like, all that shit, like, your sense, like, for the first time, I felt that it left me, because, like, real shit, like, I, what was this last week, like, I did some crazy shit, like, you know, I fucking party and I fucking, you know, but I literally, for the first time, felt like, oh my God, like I can't feel what I once felt. I used to feel like this presence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this yeah. really strong presence. Almost like something was guiding me, or like, I don't like, want to sound corner, like angels or something just in me too. Like something yeah. that I feel like, all right, like it left for the first time. I'm like, holy shit, like I'm really depleted. Yeah. So I went, I laid in the yeah. sun, back to back. I'm like, dude, I need to charge back up. I didn't put mad water in my body. Yeah. And that's how I know this to be real. And, you know, I talk a lot of shit jokingly, but I know that the whole sex thing, bro, that shit is not the move, bro. Yeah. It really, it really isn't. It's, it, it's draining. It, it's nah, really, it, really it, draining. It is, man. It's a, it's a spiritual act, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a spiritual act. We, we, we made it, like you say, so casual. And, um, you know, it stands that each time you, like, you have sex, bro, you're having a spiritual experience. Yeah. You know? and stand, and you literally lose a part of yourself. And for, for women... Like for men, you know, we're we're givers. Women are more receivers, right? You know, each time where we have sex, but you're imprinting your DNA in that woman. You know what I'm saying? So she go and have sex with five other guys, bro. That's just five other, you know what I'm saying? Other DNA. And then, you know, those guys have sex with, you know, ten other women. Yeah. yeah, so like, you know, it's crazy, bro. All that energy. Remember, energy can be destroyed. It only be transfers, bro. So it's just being, you know, it, it's just being transferred, man. That's why a lot of times you you see certain people that like they have certain personalities, right? Because you know there's just how so many sexual partners. So all these personalities, all these DNA, you know what I'm saying? It's all tied into your personality. And now you, you're having mood swings. You're acting a certain way. You don't understand it because all this energy, you know, you're picking it up. Yeah. You know, people kind of just casualize sex, right? Because yes. you even have women now. Who were like the, they might be like, oh yeah, I slept with this person, but it didn't mean anything. It was just sex, it's a right? Bro, right? It's, it's, it's lie, just bro. sex. It's, yo, it's a lie, bro. Right? That's my or or or, or, or you're like, yo, like we're doing this, but it, it's just sex, it right? Just it's sex. it's it just sex. It didn't mean anything. And it goes back to that self love thing. It's because we try to we try to ignore that part of us. It's a deeper issue, but we don't want to face it, right? But what happens is if you don't face it, bro, 
all you're doing is building up on that trauma, and eventually it's come crashing down, bro. Yeah. Well, you see, you can't escape it. That crashes. Yeah, yeah that's oh, yeah, crashing down on you. My my whole life, man. My life is so different now. Like again, just understanding this. Like again, like being at that phase where I was just like just going through a whole phase. Like I, I was so scattered and just all over the place and so depressed, and my life just fell in shambles. I was getting into it with my parents and just like I didn't understand that I was the cause of that. Versus now, like when I look at my so life, I'm like, man, I have so much more clarity, so much more focus. Like I have a, like a, like not not cocky, but I got a confidence about myself because I'm sure of myself. I'm sure of where I'm going and what I'm doing and my purpose, you know. And I'm not gonna lie and say it's easy, bro, because it's, it's not, like it takes it takes some heavy boundaries to it's be not, like it's not, say bro. no to women because it makes you more attractive. When a man tells a woman, hey, I'm not trying to have sex with you, bro, yeah. it, it's like a some type of like light bulb that goes I, I, off. I've experienced that shit. Like, the, the ones that I like, I'm like, no, please, like, no, I'm not. And then it's just like, hey, bro, the fucking, like, you just stir the pot. Now they're right. Like, Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they want that shit no. even more. No, yeah, because like they just smell it, bro. It's like it's yeah. like when uh, uh, um, <laughs> they smell it. No, no, because we're saying you know, saying that work. Smell it all you want. At the end of the day, we're we're, we're animals. You know, we you are. Know? So like, just like yeah. the dogs on heat. Like you know what I'm saying? They can smell that. Mm. So like, oh, like right, 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 right. So they they know when. Okay. Yeah, he 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 he, he, he stands at himself. He's mm-hmm. celebrating. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's, it's you no. Know, we give off that that that. It's something we. Something in the air, Fuck. you know, so that we connect with, you know. Yeah, um, that's true. It man. Happens, man. It's true, but it's again like and I, I've had to learn like through trial and error, like setting boundaries. Like that's why I can't have chicks over at my crib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't come over your crib. We can't Netflix and chill because I know I'm weak. I know my weaknesses. Yeah, because yeah, Netflix and chill, bro. That shit ain't, man, ain't nobody know. chilling now. We like, you still watching? <laughs> <laughs> Still watching? I don't think I ever had. I don't think I ever had a successful Netflix and chill, bro. I have never, bro. Yeah. I don't think I've ever successfully made that. Yeah, we chill. I don't know about that. Yeah, we chill. I don't think I've ever, bro. Like this. Watching, trying to watch that same movie. Right. Yeah. Like, I never finished that shit. We gonna watch it for real this time. We gonna watch it for real this time. But the the hard part is is like, especially like for me, losing my virginity at such a young age is like battling that old me. Whenever I say no, you know, because I know what I'm capable of, right? Like, yeah. like knowing that I can still be that villain and sometimes thinking back on what appeared to be like glorious moments. Like, boy, back in the day, and it's like, man, you weak now. You know, like just that battle between the spirit and the flesh. Like, yeah. man, you really going to tell this chick no to Netflix and chill? You know, like, yeah. come on, man. You're you going to be. So, and so it don't have to take be another man down to me. It, it could be the, just the, the, the so. adversary, like. Trying to get at me in my mind, man. Beautiful just thing, like, and, like know your own, like to see your growth and know it. Like that shit's it holds so much value. Like yeah. I, I experienced that, and I fucking came back from Vegas and fucking, you know, everything that I built went back That's in. It made me, that shit made me so depressed, dog. To know, like, yeah, I built this whole fucking new person who I was, and I just yeah. And, hey, keep it in your pants, man. Just, just it's it's powerful, but it's you can't knock it till you try it, man. It, it may not be cool, but it's that's the the greatest success tip I can give anybody is learn to control yourself and tap into that spiritual power. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, seeing retention is real. Um, and it's not, I know it's popular online now, but really, man, it, it's, it's it's each time you release, you know, as a guy, you're, you're giving a piece of your soul. You know, and, and you don't want to do that. You know, understand that your that's your God power, that's your energy, and you want to be very, very intentional and selective with that. Oh, simple. Just save your energy. Point blank, simple.